Hello there. We're going to take a look at energy transfer in a system. What we've got here is something called a calorimeter. It's fairly simple. It's just a beaker full of water with a thermometer and then something to stir the water and then it's all contained within some type of insulated cup, um, usually just a couple of styrofoam cups. And it's called a calorimeter and we're going to use something like this in lab. Energy or heat is always transferred from a warmer object to a cooler object until equilibrium is reached. You got that? Energy is transferred from a warm object to a cool object until both objects are the same temperature. That's called equilibrium. So let's say we have a beaker and it's got water inside. What we're going to do is we're going to add a hot piece of metal to the water. Now we just learned that energy flows from a warm object to a cool object until they both reach the same temperature. So when we place this hot piece of metal in the cool water, you know that this metal is going to give off energy or heat. The energy that it gives off will be absorbed by the water. And we can measure the temperature of the water with a thermometer. So this will kind of function as a simple calorimeter. OK, the energy lost by the warm object will be equal to the energy gained by the cool object. So if we know how much energy this water gained, we also know how much energy this hot piece of metal lost. Because however much energy this metal loses is how much energy this water gains. Because as this hot piece of metal gives off energy, the only place that energy can go is into the water, especially if this cup is insulated well. You know um, that energy is abbreviated with the symbol Q. So Q, that's the energy lost by the metal. And you know that um, the negative sign means that energy is lost. So the energy that's lost by the metal will be equal to the energy that's gained by the water. So for instance, if the metal loses 15 joules of energy, then the water has to gain 15 joules of energy. You got that? So if 15 joules of heat energy are given off by this red piece of metal, then the water gains 15 joules of heat energy. Now you know that Q means energy, but Q is also equal to mc delta t. So in place of Q, we can plug in mc delta t for the metal, and we can plug in mc delta t for the water. So what we'll be doing in these energy transfer problems is in, in the problem, we'll be given a number of these variables, and then we'll probably be asked to solve for one of them. It might even be the specific heat capacity of the metal. So this is energy transfer in a system. 